Do you want to know what happened 20 years ago when I performed the first legal same-sex marriages in the world? Do you want to have a bit of a view of what happened behind the scenes? My name is Reverend Brent Hawks. I, for many years, was the senior pastor of a Metropolitan Community Church, and I'm currently the executive director of Rainbow Faith and Freedom. I recently did a video, video number 74, where I talked about the events leading up to the day when we performed those first same-sex weddings. And so if you haven't looked at video 74, I'd encourage you to do so, so you have a little bit better of an idea of how we got to this place. After dozens of interviews, yeah, there was a lot of excitement and a lot of nervousness about that day. And certainly there was a lot of security on that day because there were many death threats that we took very seriously, indeed that the police took very seriously. And the night before the weddings, I called my family back in New Brunswick to ask my sister to tell my family, my brother and my sisters and my mom and dad, that I loved them in case anything happened. That morning, uh, it was a Sunday, the weddings were in the afternoon, so we had church in the morning. So that morning, the bodyguards came and picked John and I up, my husband John and I up, and took us by an alternative route to the church to make sure that we were safe getting to the building. Those bodyguards were, uh, were 12 people, and I half jokingly, but half seriously, uh, say that they were 11 of the toughest looking lesbians you ever saw in your life, and one gay man coordinating it all, so I felt very protected. And because it was a Sunday, we had morning services at 9 o'clock and 11 o'clock. And so we kind of let our guard down during those services. And in the middle of the 11 o'clock service, a woman came to the front of the church and was yelling and throwing anti-gay uh, pamphlets among the congregation. And she came up and assaulted me. And so she was taken away by some security people. And she was arrested and eventually charged with assault and found guilty for assault. But that made us even more nervous, obviously, for the day. There were 50 police officers eventually who came to the church uh, to provide uh, security and protection. There were a thousand people who came uh, to attend the services that day. All of them had to be searched to make sure that there weren't any guns, etc., being brought into the sanctuary. And there were protesters outside in the streets. There were 80 media outlets from around the world. And for some of those countries, that was the first time there was ever a positive portrayal of gay and lesbian people uh, in the media. So a lot of excitement and a lot of terror. We chose to marry two couples that day, a gay male couple and a lesbian couple. And so the weddings proceeded uh, without incident. Um, I, when going into the service, I had to and wear my bulletproof vest. I had to walk down the corridor of the hallway to get to the sanctuary through a whole bunch of police officers. And when I walked into the sanctuary, the place erupted in applause because people knew of the excitement, the historic nature of that day. Again, the weddings proceeded without incident. At the end of the service, I proclaimed the two couples married. And then we posed for a picture with the gay male couple on one side and the lesbian couple on the other side. And it was kind of weird because the next day, all of the newspaper boxes had that identical picture uh, of, of the weddings. I couldn't leave home after the weddings for two weeks without a bodyguard because of the threats. I had a phone call at my home that said uh, people like me should have their heads uh, cut off. And even to this day, e extra security at our home. So the government of the day, the provincial government, refused to register the weddings. And so we sued them. We had, had to sue all three levels of government, the city, the provincial, and the federal. And we asked for our court case to be joined with the court case of eight couples who had also tried to get a license at City Hall but were denied. And so they became one court case. We won the initial court case, but it was the implementation of the ruling the judge said would be delayed for to give the government's time. And the government's appealed our win uh, to the appeals court, and we won that court case. And in this case, the judges made the ruling to be automatic and instant, but they, asked, they told the government to backdate the approvals to include those weddings that happened on January the 14th, 2001 at the Metropolitan Community Church of Toronto. And eventually we won the free vote in Parliament. And all of that together made Canada the first country in the world to have legal same-sex weddings. 
So now, 20th anniversary. A lot has happened in those 20 years. More and more countries have given equal marriage to gay and lesbian couples, and the movement continues to grow. And even in countries that haven't done that, we've seen some advancement around human rights protections or relationship recognition uh, because of the model that was set by Canada and other countries. And I have to be honest with you, you know, I've been, at, been involved in this, as I said, for 40 years, and I, I thought we would win human rights protection for jobs, not be fired or kicked out of our apartments. I thought we would win some things for relationship recognition, maybe pension rights or the right to visit our partners in the hospital, but I never imagined that we would get equal marriage in my lifetime. And yet, here we are, celebrating that 20th anniversary. So I hope you found this video informative, helpful. I encourage you to share it with family and friends of other and others. Uh, we'd really appreciate it if you'd subscribe. Uh, and also, beside the subscription button, if you check out that little bell, uh, that means you'll get notices whenever we post new videos. Thank you.